There we go. That's why Ms. Elton is the technical person. Um, every time we start off at the beginning of school year, this is the first event for us for this year. So uh, the, the very first uh, kickoff that we have. And as you know, we'll go through all of the different things. We'll have the ninth grade project. We'll have a rabidopsis. Remember, rabidopsis. Several intakes of breath. <gasps> a rabidopsis. No, not that. But the cool thing for me, guys, is... You guys are here, you've been in this room a lot, we've done this a lot over the years, and to see you guys at this point in your school careers, you know, it's, it's kind of cool, because you know, it doesn't feel that long to us, those of us who work with you, that you guys were like little tweeby ninth graders, you know? But now you, look at you, you're like mature, like near adults, this is kind of cool. So part of what we're gonna be figuring out, like what is this crazy near adult thing that we're going, that we are making you do as part of your, uh, as your Blue Ridge process. So a few things we're going to uh, get into this. Uh, um, basically the reason for doing this, obviously you have advisors at your school. You've already gone through some of this. You're doing things like the scavenger hunt. You're looking at the website. Maybe you've looked at some other projects. You've got a sense of what this is. But the reason we like to do this as a kickoff, there's two things. First of all, one is to, is so that everybody's hearing the same thing. Everybody's getting the same message. When we talk about something, for example, like a legacy, sometimes people have different ideas about what that is. And we wanna make sure that everybody has the same understanding. So that's a big part of today, is making sure that you're hearing, you know, from Blue Ridge, what those expectations. And with that, you're gonna hear from your advisors a little bit because they, you know, they work uh, specifically with you on these things. So I'm gonna real quick introduce the advisors. Um, obviously, you know who your own advisor is, but uh, I'm gonna just introduce uh, everybody that's here uh, for this trip for advisors. So we've got Mr. Shiflett from Grain County, and I would suggest that you applaud loudly for your own advisor at least. You know? So there you go. Yeah, ingratiate yourself, it's a good thing. Ms. Esch from Fluvanna. <laughs> Ms. Knight from Nelson. Golf clap. Oh, very nice. And Ms. Wilson from Madison. All right, very good. So, we're going to get into this thing. And some of you guys, I know, it, you know, I've had some conversations already. Uh, some of y'all I've had some uh, correspondence from. You know, just what is this thing that we're doing here? Uh, and why do we do it? That's a lot of, uh, a lot of what we're going to get into today. So, you guys, some of you Nelsonians will recommend, uh, recognize uh, Grace on that. Uh, so what we're, what we're looking at is this project that has lots and lots of components to it. But the nice thing is you've got class time uh, that you can get a lot of this stuff done in. And many of you have already done some of your work for this. Many of you have served your internships. How many of you guys, uh, raise your hand if you did uh, part, part or all of your internship in the summertime? Okay. So a few examples real quick. Katie, what, uh, what was your... Virginia Coalition for Inclusive Communities. So what kind of experience uh, did you have there? Okay, very good. Okay, great. So, Awesome. Okay. Bio, so uh, bioengineering, uh, diversity and inclusion. What, who, who had their hand up over here? Let's see somebody. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry. Say, yes, Miss Patch. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's right. You did the, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, uh, yeah. How did that go? I hadn't had a chance to catch up with you. Yeah, that's, that's different. All right. Maybe one more example. Who else did, uh, did a summer? Yeah, Delaney. <laughs> okay. All right. So we got athletic training. We got uh, archaeology. We've got diversity training. We've got bioengineering. All kinds of stuff. The cool thing about this is, and for those of you, I, I don't know how many of you guys are walking into this. I'm hoping it's not too many because I've talked to with a lot of you at the end of last year, kind of going, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do. Uh, that if you're at that point, hopefully by the end of today, that's part of the purpose would be uh, to put a little bit in, uh, put a little bit of uh, uh, information out for you that you can consider that uh, might help guide you to, to what you're looking to do. The other thing is that you're going to have an opportunity to interact and you guys are going to do a little bit of evaluation, like, how, you know, 
does this sound good? Does this look good? Part of what you're going to be going through here is a process where you're going to be proposing, formally proposing. Even those of you who've already done your summer internships, by the way, are going to be part um, are going to be part of that process because uh, you know there's a bigger picture than just the internship. So we're going to get into this. But the first thing I want you to do, and uh, this is where you will need a phone. The first thing I want you to do um, is get with somebody or get with maybe two, one, uh, not everybody's going to be using their phones, by the way. So you're going to get with a group of two or three, just people from your class or whatever, real quick. A group, don't do anything yet. Don't do that yet because it's not open yet. They won't, it's not going to take anything. So I'll tell you when to do that in just a sec. But right now, I just want to have you uh, have some conversation. I want you as a group of two or three people to come up with kind of a top three list. What are three things, very brief, you know, one or two word answers. What are three things that you hope to gain from this experience? So take a couple of minutes and talk about that. Get, get with two or three people and do that. All right, so where's my other computer? I knew I was missing something. There we go. No, I'm good, thanks. I should be good here. Let's see. All right. Uh oh. Uh huh. Mm. Yeah. So. All right. Uno momento. There we go. Uh, uh. Now, you guys keep thinking about it for just one second. I, I was missing a setting on here. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh. Moderation. How did I do? Okay. Where is my? All right, at this point, you can go ahead and start putting that in. So, here we go. So, what are the, here we go. That's what I was looking for. All right, so this is what we're doing here. So, put, uh, just enter your three things, you go, or you can do them uh, just three separate texts, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to just start putting, uh, I'm going to start showing some of these responses. Whoever's putting bread, I'm kind of tired of that one. So, yeah. Hmm. Uh, that works. It's okay. Keep it. What do we got here? Diplomacy and A, time management. Business experience. Keep them coming. A seventh period. Yeah. Pizza. Of course.
I see. People in four period days have no idea what you're talking about, by the way. Yep. I see. We can we can absolutely know where that one's coming from. <laughs> I'm feeling curious. Still coming in. Oh. Got a few more coming in. Somebody wants an A. Somebody wants an A plus. College recommendation, legacy in the community. All right, interesting. All right, here's what we're going to do real quick. We're going to see what this thing looks like when you put all these sort of mashed up. And this is what we got. Interestingly enough, this is the first time ever that the word fields has come up a lot. But uh, who, who knows? Maybe uh, somebody just kind of got on that. But uh, a couple of things about this. I mean, this is what you guys are hitting on a lot of what this experience is about. And, it, you know, one thing's one of the big words is experience. So for most of your educational career, your education has looked like this. You know, it's been somebody up in front of you talking to me, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, with uh, doing different kinds of work together or whatever. But this is the, probably the first time where you as an individual are going to be completely driving the bus on what it is that you're doing. That's what happens from here on out, by the way. That's how college goes. You know, you hit that first year of college, you know, you'd be taking sort of the big classes everybody's required to take. But that's a part of what you're doing in that setting is you're starting to say, okay, what is my pathway going to be through this? So that's one of the things that this experience can kind of do for you. Connections, huge. And you'll see a couple of things, examples here. I'm going to talk a little bit about previous projects and how people have leveraged those uh, to really uh, to be able to do things after they got out of high school. Skills, huge. You guys know this, right? At the end of this project, you will have presented, you're going to stand up and basically do, you know, the equivalent of a TED talk on your project. People find it amazingly easier than some of the other presentations that you've done because it will be all about what you have done. It is all about your story. So that's easy to talk about. You'll also do uh, other stuff. You know, you, we'll do our expo presentation. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Career. This is a great place to just check out your career. There are some people who say, you know, have said all their life, I want to be an architect. I want to design the coolest buildings. And then they go and they work in an architect's office for, you know, a period of time and they see what they do and they go, no, that's not really me. I like to be, you know, in a different kind of field. So this is one way to test that out. Or we've also had many, many people who've gone and said, I'm interested in this. They go in and find out more about it and they go, yeah, that's it. We've got people who are pursuing PhDs in uh, areas that they, um, uh, that they were interested in as part of their study in Blue Ridge and part of what they did as seniors. We've got people who've gone into uh, career pathways with the connections, some of them with the connections they made here. So lots of things that you guys have hit on this that I think really help to, uh, to relate to why do we do this? Because the purpose of this thing is not to make you guys miserable. You know, I mean, that's, I know it can be a little scary and it can be a little daunting, particularly at the beginning, but Literally, at this point, we have worked with thousands of people who have successfully done this and really turned all of this stuff that you guys are looking to accomplish, have really turned this into a positive thing for them. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, specifically, some of the things we're looking to do. What do we want to accomplish here as part of your as part of the goals for this project? This is the problem of having two clickers up here. Real world learning. You're gonna. This is not textbook based learning. You're gonna be doing some research, but you're gonna be doing real type research, not like, okay, what does the book tell me to do? You're gonna be doing. This is gonna be a challenge. It is already a challenge. I see. You know, I, I've seen it. I've heard it from some of you guys. Like, how do I do this? I don't. You know, I'm putting all this. Uh, you know, I'm 
trying to contact mentors that are not responding to me, that's a challenge. It's going to be a challenge you're going to face in a lot of different things. In your college applications, it's going to be a challenge you're going to face when you go out to look for a job in the real world. So this is a good challenge is where you learn things. If you're not challenged, you're not learning. So that's a part of it. You're going to get, uh, this came up in, the, uh, in your responses, contact with people of influence. Um, you'll get academic independence. You get to research and, and approach this in any way that you can sell us on, you know, uh, whatever you, you're interested in finding out. I mean, you guys have heard this uh, in the past, but we've had projects on things like um, green burials, you know, on uh, ec ecologically friendly burials. We've had projects on uh, body piercing and tattooing. We've had projects on uh, equine acupuncture. We've had projects on almost anything you can think of, arts, uh, and creative writing or, or uh, visual arts, design, computers, architecture, you name it, you get to choose that. Um, communication with experts. I mean, this is an area when you get into that, you know, we always talk about academic and professional. When you get into that setting, what does that really look like when you're in an office, when you're in a, or in a work environment? How should that look? Um, research and analysis. Uh, one of the things I, I heard from probably half a dozen graduates. I mean, people just email us, you know, just say, hey, here's something that we're doing. Here's something I'm doing in college. Or here's something beyond where I use some of those skills that we actually worked on in this project or in this program. And this is one of the big ones that come, uh, come up. If you can write a 10-page analytical research paper, which is what is required here, you're golden for college because that's what you'll be doing. And if you have those skills in that practice, that's a wonderful thing. Um, community service. Uh, some of you guys know, and some of you guys are, as you're starting to get your heads into your college apps and stuff, community service is huge on college applications, not because it checks off a little box that the admissions people have. Everything that goes, you, as you guys are putting your college applications together, always keep in mind that everything that they're looking at, they're looking at what's underneath it. You know, Blue Ridge Virtual Governor School, that's not just a box, right? You know, we talked about this when you guys came into the program. We, we're here not to help you get into colleges. That's great. I'm, I'm going to be really thrilled because you guys are all going to be applying and you're going to be getting in colleges your choice. That's wonderful. And I'm really thrilled about that. But in the, in the long run, what's the really critical piece is, are you going to do something important with that college uh, experience and are you prepared for it? And so those, that's where community service can help prepare you for that. Presentation skills, you already know about this. You, you've been doing group presentations for your entire time in this program so that if you fell over, somebody could catch you. Now you're going to be doing it on your own, and that's a good thing. And that's another one that's going to uh, take you out there. And the last thing is a lot of people really have a good time with this. They get out there. We've had people that have gone and gotten every requirement satisfied and then some, um, say, first semester, and then ask, can I keep doing my project second semester because I'm having such a good time with it? Yeah, you bet, because you're getting some great real-world experience. So that won't happen with everybody, but it is something where you go out there, enjoy it get out there I and mean, people in the workplace who if they're doing it right they're having a good time you know they they should be enjoying themselves and you should be a part of that as well it should be a part of what you're doing shouldn't just a, it is a challenge it is you know sometimes it's a little scary because it is a challenge but it's also a great opportunity to have some fun so here's i'm going to give you just a few examples of some things this is just feedback again unsolicited just from people who have done this project in the past so i'll give you a minute just to read this because this is kind of a fun one for me So Kathleen was a Fluvanna student, one of the first uh, students that I worked with, um, particularly as we sort of started expanding what the uh, senior internship looked like. Uh, at that time, she was real into astronomy. She wanted to do that for a living. She went and did this. She went over to UVA, uh, went, uh, got in with the observatory there, and they were charting out the path for this uh, New Horizons probe. And so she was part of the team that was actually, you know, trying to figure out how to make predictions about where it was going to end up and how to how to control the things that were going on with it with the probe so that it would be in the right place at the right time. So she ended up not going. She actually she became a, uh, a hearing interpreter. She, uh, she uh, uh, American Sign Language expert as her career, you know, had nothing to do with astronomy, but she's still into the fact that her project has a legacy that is still going on out there in space. You know, that's the kind of thing you can do with this. Here's another one. Just take a take a minute for a second.
This kind of relates to the contacts aspect of it. There are a lot of people in this program who have done things in their projects, I could say, that have carried them into college, either uh, college opportunities, scholarship opportunities, or actual employment opportunities. So this is a great example from Lindsay. Uh, here's an, um, this is another one that was kind of fun. This is uh, Isaac Micheri in the middle here. Isaac's a uh, William Monroe grad. Isaac did his, uh, so the rest of these guys are Marines, all right, and, and a couple other consultants. So I, Isaac did his project with a uh, company called MITRE in Charlottesville. It's a nonprofit organization, and their job is basically to test government contracts. So if you want to sell a drone to the government, which is actually what they were working on, um, the guy, last guy on the right is holding their, mon their prototype drone. If you're a company that wants to sell a drone, well, they have to test it to make sure everything that you're trying to sell the government works. So that's what MITRE's job is. So Isaac had done his, um, his internship there. Interestingly enough, he got into a lot of things while he was there. He got to be, uh, they invited him to their, like their company ball and he got to meet all, you know, a bunch of celebrities there and you know, all kinds of stuff. But at the end of his internship, at the end of his senior year, they invited him to come out as a consultant as part of the project that he had worked on with MITRE, which was uh, this drone project. And he actually, they flew him out to California, out to the uh, a base in the desert, and he was part of this testing thing for this drone. And that was all through his Blue Ridge internship. And so he's out now in California, I think at Stanford, uh, doing, you know, studying out there. And, you know, he's going to maintain these connections. He's got, I mean, think of what that looks like on a resume. How many high school kids walk out saying, well, yeah, I was a consultant for the Marines in, in drone construction. That looks pretty good as opposed to, you know, uh, some other things. So maybe uh, here's one more. Um, Tamara was uh, Orange, uh, Orange County High School graduate. Um, she did... Uh, Worked at Library Congress, uh, film preservation, that's up in Culpeper, a uh, great uh, spot for people to get internships. Um, and she, she was like, yeah, this is fun, this is neat, um, but you know, it's not what I wanna do for a career. But then she got to, to college and was able to turn that experience into um, having, uh, be able to get an internship in college or a, a graduate, excuse me, a, a student job where she is working preserving rare books. And this is at University of Virginia. So we get to bump into her every once in a while and see how that's going. So that's kind of the point with this. I mean, you can take this, and this is really one of the points for getting together. You guys are all going into this, and this is where I really, really want you to think about this. You can go into this and go, well, this is just something I have to do. I mean, some of the things up there, uh, you know, when we were saying, what are you, you know, hoping to get out of this? And A, we want you to get A's as well, because that means you've done really well if you've gotten an A. So that's a good thing. You know, I want to get my Blue Ridge seal. That's great. But if that's all you're thinking about, you know, those are called, that's called a performance goal, right? If all your, if your performance goal is, I want to get an A, I want to graduate, I want to do this, and that's all you're working to, you're going to, you know, kind of get up to here. If you're thinking about it in terms of like the things that these guys have accomplished, then you're thinking, then you're going to actually get something really, really meaningful out of this. So I'm going to give you one last example here, because what you do matters. And how you do it matters. So this is Brittany Garten. She graduated from Orange County High School. She has what we consider to be the gold standard senior project. She started a school in an orphanage in Romania. Okay. So when you're thinking about what your project is, you know, that's something to keep in mind. This is something we've seen. You know, you've seen some of these other examples here that I've just gone through. We'll talk a little bit about some uh, very specific examples. And this is not to intimidate you. I mean, we've seen great projects in, say, you know, athletic training. We've seen great projects in, you know, uh, local language or education or whatever it happens to be. But what we look at is what's the potential? You could take any topic and potentially really make that into an in-depth and full-on learning experience. And that's what we hope to see from all of you because we have seen it. We have seen a high school kid from Orange, Virginia, be able to go over and start a school that is still going in Romania. This, I think this was like seven, eight, I don't know, longer than that, probably eight, nine or 10 years ago, and that school still exists. Talk about a legacy, boom, you know? So that's part of what we're here to talk about. So one more, uh, one more uh, thing for you here. Let me get into this just one sec. So you're gonna get back with your, uh, with your partners. Don't enter, any, enter anything on this yet, but uh, you're gonna get back with your conversation partners. So what skills or attributes, what personal skills or attributes do you think you're going to need to make this happen?
Okay. Don't text yet. Talk about it for just a minute. I don't have it on yet. So just talk about it for. So think about what are the top dedications somebody jumped in before I turned it back off. But that, that's a good one to start off with. Jericho's right on it. Boom. All right. Just think about it. Talk about it. I'll turn it on just one second. But I want to really think about like what are your top? What are the most critical dedications? Big. All right, turning it on. So as soon as you guys have uh, have some choices here. Initiative, professionalism, communication skills. Oops, all right, it's coming back. It's coming back, sorry. Keep them coming. Humor, I like that. Back to communication, open-mindedness, nice. Passion, huh. Oh. Determination. Initiative, perseverance. I think that's uh, meant to be hardworking procrastination at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got a lot going on here. Perseverance, I like that as a centerpiece. We never, I never know what's going to show up here, but I, this is some of you guys are in the in the midst of this already. I've been communicating with some of you guys, some and some of y'all talked about it as you came in today. I mean, here you go. You're you're trying to make this thing happen. You've got some ideas. You've gone out there. You've thrown some, uh, you know, thrown some lines in the water just to see uh, if anybody's going to bite. You put emails out to different people. Yeah, so I'd like to come kind of hang out at your place and learn something, you know. You're going to have to stick with that. It's just like finding a job. And there's several things that make that happen more often than not. Everybody that we've ever worked with in this program has been able to get an internship. So if you're at that point, you're going, I don't know, it's never going to work. It's going to work. We're going to make it happen. Your advisor, me, we've got lots of resources. We've got other people who've done something maybe in the areas that you're interested in so we can guide you to. We're not going to get these things for you. That's part of your job. That's part of what you do. But perseverance is how you're going to get that. If you haven't already lined it up and you're working on it, you're going to just have to stay with it. That's your primary job right now is just sticking with it until you get that thing lined up that you're looking to do. Uh, communication, that's part of how you do it. And you guys are very used to communicating in short bites of, of text in very short uh, sort of ways. Um, you guys are also very good at emailing because I've seen your, you know, seen your work over the years. That's a good thing because not a lot of students are, quite honestly. You guys seriously, and I say this often, you guys get, send better emails for the most part than uh, professionals at the State Department of Education that I work with. So, uh, so you got that going for you. That's a good thing. But email alone and text or whatever are not going to get you what you need quite often. Communication is going to have to be phone calls. It's going to have to be personal visits. It's going to have to be things like that uh, as well. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Stubbornness kind of goes in with perseverance. Humor is good because, you know, one of the things, if you look back at any of the projects, and how many of you guys have actually looked back at prior projects, have gone in and looked at some of the senior? If you have not done it, go to our website where it says um, academics and drop down and show student work, and you can see senior projects from prior years. And if you're looking for a topic or looking for an idea, a good thing is to go to 
the counties, either your county or those counties that are close to you, because you might be able to find something. Uh, we've got several people that have served that have served as mentors for multiple students over the years. You might be able to find somebody that does something that you're interested in through looking at those senior projects that are close to you. So, uh, uh, whoop, hello. I don't want that happen. Get out of here. Go away. Go away. You guys know I don't like Microsoft, right? Uh, Where did it go? All right. All right. Sorry about that. So here's a quick video. I want you to, this is a little bit about what does it take to be successful? So how many of you guys have watched TED Talks? Almost, almost there, right? Pretty, pretty much everybody. Great. TED Talks, when you guys get close to your presentations, um, one of the things that you'll need to do is really spend some time looking at TED Talks because it's worthwhile. That'll give you a little bit of information about um, how to be, you know, thinking about being successful. So this is a guy who has done a lot of work around TED Talks, and he got really interested in, as you'll see in this video, got really interested in what does it take to make people successful? And so he felt like, hey, I'm at TED, there's tons of successful people here, I'm gonna go ask them. And some of these people will be people you, you'll know and have heard of. So I'm gonna give you a disclosure straight up front. He's got one word that I prefer not to have setting but you guys are old enough to handle it so it's just going to happen so there you go uh i apologize for any bruised ears but uh just give this a little bit of attention for just a minute because i think this tells you a lot about you know being successful Really a two-hour presentation I give to high school students cut down to three minutes. It all started when they own planes. I don't know where I put my uh, outlines. Uh, my outlines. I think they're in here. Nice. They look real. Yeah. It's look really good. Really good. Okay. I didn't do. There we go. Years, 500 interviews later, I'm going to tell you what really is. I think I'm going to do this now. And then we'll. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah, as soon as this is over. This is true for love. We don't need for money. Carol Coletta says, I would pay something. Not yet. You do what I do. You're interested in being in the good for love. The money comes anyway. Work. Rupert Murdoch said to me, it's all hard work. Well, nothing comes easy. But I have a lot of fun. Did he say fun, Rupert? Yes. <laughs> it's just you have fun working and they work hard. I figured they're not worth all they are working for us. <laughs> Good. Now the starting says to be successful, put your nose down to something and get damn good at it. There's no magic, it's practice, practice, practice. And it's focus. Norman Jacobson said to me, I think it all has to do with focusing yourself on one thing. And push. David Gallo says, push yourself. This is what you've got to push, push, push. you got to push some shyness and solve doubt. Goldie Hahn says, I always had solved doubts. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't smart enough. I didn't think I'd make it. Now, it's not always easy to push yourself, and that's why they invented the mother of <laughs> Frank Geary. Frank Geary said to me, my mother pushed me. Sir. Sherwin Newland says it was a privilege to serve as a doctor. Now, a lot of kids tell me they want to be millionaires, and the first thing I say to them is, okay, well, you can't serve yourself. You've got to serve others something of value, because that's the way people really get rich. 
ideas. Headster Bill Gates says, I had an idea. Found your first microcomputer software company. I'd say it was a pretty good idea. And there's no magic to creativity in coming up with ideas. It's just doing some very simple things. And I give lots of evidence. Persist. Joe Crowder says persistence is the number one reason for our success. You gotta persist through failure. You gotta persist through crap, which of course means criticism, rejection, asking, and pressure. So the big end, the answer to this question is simple. Pay four thousand bucks and come to TED. Or failing that, do the eight things, and trust me, these are the big eight things that made the success. Thank you, testers, for all your interviews. There you go. The secret to life right there. Everything that you need to know about being successful, right? So seriously, when it comes to this, a lot of that is true. You, know, you guys hit it. Persistence. Uh, the passion came up on there. You know, get stuff that you're interested in, get stuff that you do, uh, that you really want to do, that you really feel like you can spend uh, some time devoted to, um, and you will do very well with this. We're going to get into some specifics on all of this in a few minutes. We're going to take just a little bit of a break here because one of the other purposes of Blue Ridge, other than uh, making you do all this kind of crazy academic stuff, is to be a community of learners and a community of people. So you guys have been off and on over the years in various uh, kind of combinations, working uh, in groups with other uh, with students from other schools in this part of this program, we're going to get to a chance to uh, get back together with uh, with some of your compadres from the other schools uh, for just a few minutes here. So we're going to do this. Mr. Reynolds, if you could hand some of those out on this side. You guys would just pass these right down the line here. You'll need something to write with, and if you don't have something, we'll get you something. Ms. B, do we have pencils and stuff back there if anybody needs them? Thank you. All righty. I think that's enough there, it is. There you go. All right. All right, you guys have seen this before. There are lots of people with lots of characteristics in this room. You need to get some bingos. And what we're going to do is we're going to give you a very specific time frame. you got about five minutes to get as many bingos as you can. And each bingo translates into a carbohydrate prize. So when I say go, you're going to be getting up, standing up, moving around, talking to people, and getting signatures on this and uh, trying to fill as many bingos as you can. Let's go. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be, it'll be. Go back out there. Uh, uh, up here is good. Yeah, up here is good for this. Hey guys, one quick thing. I just noticed something on here. It says all seven schools. There are not seven schools represented. There are four schools represented here. So you need uh, representation from all four of those schools. Have we? What's, what's that? Well, I, I'm just thinking about. I'm doing English 12 online this year for the first time. Right? It's a class of design, um, but I'm just kind of worried about managing my grading load. And what I think is, kids will kind of be you know, spread out over 12 modules at various points of the year. Okay. But if I get slammed, you know, on one day with 30 projects. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So. so. 
Jones here at least to kind of put locks and gates into it so that <clears throat> they are kind of moving at a step. Yeah, well, that's a lot, a lot of, you know, with this, you know, with our regular pro uh, projects that we do all through the course of this, that's what we do. You know, we'll start in September, go to November, and it's not like you wait, you know, the last grading piece is actually usually pretty quick and easy. You know, whatever comes in, the teachers do together and, you know, they're but they're just grading the very final project. They've seen, you know, the right. critical components up through. That's so, why I do essays. I've yeah. seen the drafts. So yeah. Grade the final. Yeah, yeah. Right. Then you know, you're sort of grading in relation to what, they may have changed or not changed in the draft. And then, uh, but the other thing is, um, and we've had some some luck with this, I mean, some pretty good luck with this is, you know, trying to turn, and I, I actually do this, I'm um, uh, teaching uh, over at uh, Mary Washington, I do this in my college classes, is do, do some both self-evaluation and peer-to-peer -peer evaluation. You know, it doesn't, you know, I'm not gonna let a peer give another peer a grade per right. se, but it informs my grading you know, I can look at it and it really cuts down a lot. You know, if they've gone in and given it a critical eyeball and what I find is it brings the overall quality of the products up because they're get, having to evaluate somebody else's. But in doing that, um, they also, you know, it does, it makes it so that a lot of grading is just like checking the, uh, the peer evaluation rather than having to go through grade every, every component. They've done a lot of the nuts and bolts of it. And Docs is great too, because you can go in and do revision history and see yep. all the green highlight. Oh yeah. There's a lot of it, I'm like, okay, full credit. Yeah. Obviously you went back and kind of fixed this. Uh, yeah, if you, um, you, you might be interested in talking to uh, with Sally at some point on the, on the turn it in thing, because there's some really good grading features that are like, okay. uh, and there's a few others out there that we haven't really looked in because we've got, you know, we've got it between the doc stuff, you know, the kind of, you know, either using comments on docs, but like where you'll have, you'll have banked stuff where you can just go in and it's like a video game. You're going, you see it and you can go. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah. You can make your own comment right. Yeah. And I'm going to, the other thing too about the journal entry is that some great questions of the day. So I'm going to write a sample journal entry to kind of demonstrate how you can use video photos. Um, yeah. I, I have a, uh, my ID card from the Bodleian Library at Oxford. I'm going to kind of take a awesome. That. So you can, you can also like do your, your documentation, of, you know, yeah. credentials and stuff. So, yeah. 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 That Boy, I'd love to see that. We might want to, I'd love to share that out with everybody. When you, if you don't mind sending that when you, when you got that together. That. So, yeah. 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 Great job with the website stuff, by the way. That was, uh, that was really nice. You know, that's a lot of how this gets built. You know, everybody over the years has contributed. And you know, we kind of look, I mean, when I, it's changed a lot over the years as we, uh, you know, as we talked about when, when you're here this summer, you know, I, you know we kind of do that process and, you know, it's gotten closer, but we're always sharpening that saw a little bit. And the more that we can have that kids can look at and go, okay, you know, it's that, that thing of, Okay, I'm going to take what I'm doing. I'm going to compare it to what I think is an idea. Oh, yeah, I see where the gaps are, you know, and I'm able to. I'll write the journal this week, and I'll shoot it by you first, and I can put it on the uh, sample website. Um, but I feel like, you know, with the new site's format, they might need an example of, you know, what it could look like. So. Yeah. Wow. I'm this I'm my project this weekend. So. <laughs> Just what you need. Give him a couple more minutes, then I'll start calling up by numbers. Pardon? Three. Oh, gonna I'm gonna. Oh, you know, I think about. It. Yeah, I've, I found it rather because otherwise it would just sort of like okay, just come up when you've completed. Then you're you know so you got the stragglers. Now I just do it the let's go five minutes. If you got more than four, what's that? Um. Oh, no, no, I like doing it like uh, more. If you've done more, you get more. So yeah, I usually, that's usually what I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Let me do a, a check here. All right. I'm checking how many, how many have we got so far? Anybody got, you got, Amber, you're almost there. All right. Lele, all right. I'm just checking for numbers of, of, uh, Okay, so okay. All right, we still got another couple of minutes here.
completely individually rather than as a project, a group project in this program. But we do still feel like there's a lot of value in the connections. And part of what you guys are going to be doing uh, today is working a little bit with some other folks about evaluating some of the things. So some of the things that you're going to be evaluating are what are the different components of the project? And we want to talk about those different components. Uh, some of your advisors are going to be coming up and speaking specifically to some of the things that we require in this project and some of the things that sometimes people have a hard time kind of processing. So the first one, we're going to get Ms. Wilson to come up and talk a little bit with you about this concept of the learning stretch, because there are two things that are required of, of this project. It needs to be a learning stretch. That's for the challenges. It needs to go beyond what you already know or what you've experienced, and it needs to be significant. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. Ms. Wilson, I'm going to turn this over to you and get your, uh, your segment of the uh, presentation up and running here. Okay, while well, he's looking for that, thank you. The which what buttons? Uh, That's terrible. The arrows. One, yep, yep. All right. All right. So a learning stretch or stretch learning, okay, is the extent to which you, you, not me, not Mr. Caraway, not your advisors, the extent to which you, okay, um, the students seize opportunities, take opportunities, okay, to extend your knowledge, to um, use, to engage in rigorous and, sorry, and uh, relevant learning. So you're, it, it's, you're going beyond, beyond the bare minimum. That's what you're doing. That's what stretch learning or learning stretches, all right? Good students' exa examples, you guys can read this, of learning stretch is to do a good job convincing that you're learning something new, that um, you're gonna show a variety of ways at, at, to which you're gaining new experiences, all right? You wanna get out of your comfort zone, and for the most of you, that starts with reaching out and making the contact. When you, that seems to be the hardest part for a whole bunch of you, right? is that first cold call that you have to make because your parents probably or your guardians up until now have made your doctor's appointments. You haven't had to speak to anybody that you don't know. You maybe had a job interview, but I would be willing to bet because most of us are from smaller communities, you didn't just walk in cold off the street. Either a friend said, hey, I work here, you should come work here too. Or you went to that grocery store every day and those faces are familiar to you when you get a job there. And, and so very few of you have probably had to speak to people that you don't know before. Learning stretch starts with those first in introductions. It's gonna offer a personal um, challenge, either physical, emotional, mental. You want it to offer you unique experiences. And obviously, we're going beyond the basics. As Mr. Caraway has shown you, some of the experiences can be so far-reaching that they go beyond the expo, right? So many of you say, oh, the expo is over, I'm done. But think about that school that's still going on in Romania. Think about the next blood drive for um, those of you uh, who participated in our blood drive next year. You know, there will be the next blood drive or the next thing that those experiences go on and you want to leave that um, for the next person, which will come into play with your legacy. But that's also a learning stretch. How much of what you've done before in your classes has Affected, affected the people that come behind you, the students that come behind you. So before you leave today, okay, you need to answer that question for yourself. How will you demonstrate that your project is a learning stretch? Thank you, Ms. Wilson. That's a critical piece. So, you know, I mean, this is, you know, again, part of the thing today is that everybody's got the same language on some of these things. That learning stretch piece, you know, when, when we see something, somebody's been around horses their entire life. 
I want to do my project for the horses, and I want to go work in the stable and, and you know, figure out about horse care, and they've been doing it for 10 years. No, that's not really the stretch. What's the stretch? There are lots of things you don't know about horses. Lots of experiences you haven't had. That's where you want to go. So that's a, a big piece of it. So, um, so that's one big piece of, uh, you know, of the whole idea of getting into it. The next big piece is communication. We talked a little bit, and you guys said this is a big part of your, your skill base. And this was a presentation. I don't think, I don't think anybody had this for uh, – are you guys doing communication? I didn't think so. Okay. So um, talking about communication a little bit. So you've got a couple of things. You guys are used to working primarily communication on your phone through a variety of uh, – um, but out of these four different things, the three that really are going to be the most effective for you are going to be that face-to-face -face communication, phone calls, and emails. Um, so don't start with text. You know, you get somebody's cell number, don't start there. Uh, if you're working in an academic and professional environment, text in that environment is considered something where you need basically to have permission to be in that circle to do that. Maybe once you've started an internship, you've talked with your um, – talk with your mentor and say, hey, is it okay if we, you know, when we're working on scheduling my next business, we do it by text, it might be easier. And they say, sure, that's fine. But then keep in mind that you're not texting in a personal context. So the abbreviations you might normally use, you want to keep it, you know, just like you do with your emails, you want to keep those things really uh, academic and professional. So face-to-face, -face, this is one where uh, I think uh, we done a lot of this but uh you know in in the past one of the things we get and it's interesting we heard it uh, i heard it this year from one of our evaluators at the expo so you know the expo we're going to bring everybody here you're going to have uh, displays you're going to have teams of people will be coming around meeting you and asking about your project it's actually kind of a neat event because it's not a formal presentation in the way that uh the end of the year presentation is but you've got to do this stuff you've got to sort of brief them that's part of what you're being evaluated on and one of the things i heard uh, from somebody this past year said I did not get a single good handshake out. These are the kind of things you want to work on, those kind of skills. Handshake skills. As a matter of fact, we're going to do this for just one second. All right? Let's see if I can get a volunteer from the back of the room here tonight. How much is it? This is what we see a lot of. It's sort of like, I. Yeah. Sort of got that look. <laughs> if you see somebody after they shake their hand with you, go like this. You're Good, solid handshake, your thumb breaks right there, keep that to be solid. Don't break their wrist, you know, don't break their hands. Just a real quick, one good thumb, that's it. Everybody stand up, find one person, do one good solid boom, 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 like that. about being nervous about their handshake. So it's like, I'm going to have to take this hand so I'm nervous, and now I'm nervous about my handshake. You know, it's like this self, you know, you know, if you feel like you need to kind of do a little bit of that before you work, that's all good. But just be solid. That's what people, when you get, when you're kind of like, just like, it just doesn't work. So that's a big one. Smiling. You know, one of the things we've talked about when you guys do presentations, when you smile, take your body, take your head. Smiling is good when you're doing that face-to-face -face stuff. Um, phone calls, this is one, I will tell you, the most effective tool for getting into it. you got to call. It is. You may get lucky with emails. It's always good to start with emails. That way you can reference that email when you're talking with somebody on the phone. But I would say uh, probably 70 to 80 uh, in this program are secure through for personal business. So you, you want to be there. All of this stuff, by the way, will be linked. I'll send out this presentation. And it's sort of stuff presentation. So you guys know about emails again. I, I, I can say from my experience with you and the, you know corresponding with lots of you about uh, your early proposals and things like that. I know I've seen I've seen what you do, I've seen what you've done with the group work. You're good with this. But
but it is good to kind of keep in mind. One of the things that sometimes happens is people will get real flowery with their emails, or they'll put like you know, kind of some some kind of um, you know, like uh, the decorative signature thing. Some of you guys still have your signature stuff from if you were doing computer science projects the last year at the event when you had a company name. Some of you guys still have your symbols and stuff like that. And people would be a little confused by that. So you want to make sure that that your email makes sense when it's going to folks. So just kind of keep an eye out. So um, we're not going to kind of go through this. You will be doing lots of communication stuff, but they, you know, one of the big things is just be conscious of the fact that your communication is not just what it feels like to you, it's how it's received on the other side. So communication's a big one. Um, obviously, that's how you're going to get your stuff. We're going to move on to the next piece of the uh, of this, which is significance. And this, so we talked about uh, significance and learning structure. These are huge. You know, I mean, significance, and I showed you the example of like Brittany's uh, uh, thing. So one of the things that I'm going to tell you straight up, the amount of work to just time on task does not equal significance. We've, I've seen some of the most killer internships that barely covered the 10 hours that are required for the internship at a, you know, as a minimum requirement. But somebody who put in a tremendous amount of in-depth uh, uh, work experience. I've also seen somebody who's put 50 hours in. So you know, it's, it's not just about the time on task. So we're going to look a little bit real quick. We're going to get uh, uh, your advisors up to talk a little bit about three components of this when we're talking about significance because you've got several different things you've got to do. You've got to do your research. Uh, what is that going to look like for your uh, questions? You're going to do your community service and uh, we uh, and we're going to do your legacy. So we're going to talk about that for just a couple of minutes here. So, Ms. Esch, I believe you and Mr. Shifflin are going to talk a little bit about this one. Because the research piece, one of the things I will tell you in the proposal process is you guys start uh, putting together your proposals that you're going to submit through the online form. You know, one of the things, one of the biggest things that I see going through is research. Is the research piece, the questions that people come up with are basically kind of like, to create some kind of report. That's something looking for something that carries a little bit more significance. So these guys will tell you what that's about. Good morning, everybody. I'm Ms. Ash. I'm with Savannah. And Mr. Chitlin is with. This is our first time doing this together, so you see the casual flow might be a little bit bumpy, but we're all getting the same place as far as you all have a research paper that's 10 to 15 pages on a topic. Should we, should we huddle? No. Um, all of you have started thinking about your research papers. You've started asking questions. And we're going to show you ways that your questions, questions can get a little bit deeper from the how do I do something, how does something work, what is the best way, because you have 15, 10 to 15 pages to cover with information that someone wants to read so that they can learn from what you have learned. You want to hit the thesis? Yeah, so my... My attempter is just finished reading the wild and I gave them all kind of metaphor that you guys can use as well. So think of yourselves as alpha wolves that is not a thing. For a wolf is an infinite forest, and what you need to do is stake out your claim by marking your territory. So you want to mark that big enough territory to make sure But they can narrow it up that you can defend it well. About what you think about this problem. And the thesis kind of makes your job easier because Find to start with way too broad pieces. I always narrow it down and write a little bit less and then narrow your scope. So here's another metaphor. Think of it as a duckboard through quicksand. Stay on the duckboards. If you start sinking in quicksand, you have not stuck to your thesis. You are sinking in that body of knowledge. It's kind of a neat skill to figure out, all right, what do I need to write about? How can I prove it? How can I narrow my job so that I'm not spending the rest of my life writing this? I made that mistake my freshman year of college. I wrote a 25 pages about a huge topic, fully wasted time. Sorry, it's a bummer of a story. <laughs> um. As you're writing your paper, it is absolutely fine. Yes, I said as you're writing for your question to evolve. You want to be sure that you start somewhere. As you research, you could find information that leads you a different way. Staying on topic, staying on that board is what's important. 
I don't think you can go into this, even with your outline, knowing exactly where your paper is going to take you by the time you get to the end of the paper. So you'll develop your thesis, you'll pull in your resources, and then you'll let the paper take you where it's going. How? No, this is perfect. You can probably definitely tell that we're both English teachers and governor school senior advisors because we get a little bit excited about the writing and you have to kind of feed off of this enthusiasm. By starting with just the thesis and going back to the introduction, you also have to realize you can let go of some of that five paragraph essay stuff that you've learned every year to get you through that English 11 SOL. Your type of writing is potentially going to change dramatically as you go from five paragraphs to 10 pages. Oh gosh, no. Tears. Um, you can begin with current events. You know what your project is going to be about. So you can go to Google, kind of combine these things together. Um, should you depend on everything Google tells you? No, but can it give you directions for research? Yes. Find out your topic and say, what are issues with English education? What are issues in physical therapy? What are issues? And then let Google pop things up and from there, you develop your time and your energy into figuring out if this is something you want to ponder. Does your question have to have a concrete answer at the end? You can answer that one. Thank you, somebody. No, it shouldn't almost have a concrete answer. It's being a synthesis question, you're putting information together to see where this is carrying you, where the world is going. So in researching what are issues with, be prepared to have questions that don't have a yes or no answer. Your mentor is also pretty good at letting you know what they ponder, what is going on in the world that they even may have taken time to research a little bit themselves. Because if they're aware of an issue or a situation, then that's something that you could potentially grab hold to and run with. Because we'll all be making our trips to the library where we'll have these great sources and they're very lengthy and very dense. So if there is someone who can give you a shortcut to getting to the information that tells you what you need to know, absolutely use your mentor for that. Your community service is also an option for discovering your question. I think we all sometimes default to our internship drives this whole thing. The community service sometimes can be just as much of a guiding factor. What are the issues that affect the community? What are things that we see in the community kind of in relation to what our internship is working with? So pretty. We're kind of using a slide that are, so key points, you'll see those on your outline. Oh, okay. Interest groups are kind of your stakeholders. They're the ones who care. You can write a great paper, but you need to have others who care other than just like you. So in finding um, nonprofit or for-profit, corporate or government studies usually on the same topic, that shows that someone else who is recognized in their world, their field of study, has looked into this. Therefore, it's more than just you who cares about this topic. There are other people who already are kind of important who lend weight to what you're trying to say. Uh, 
they have that opinion. Fine. I think they're already start writing. Okay. Back to our hook plus our thesis equals the map of the paper. You want to walk them through this again, or are we kind of back where we started? Oh. It is important to address the history of a topic, but not to wallow in the history of a topic. You can get a good two to three pages telling me the history of physical therapy before you ever get to the question that you're going to address. And that's a good two to three pages for a teacher to just put an X through because they're still looking for the topic that you're going to give them. So be careful that when you provide background information, it is pertinent. And there is definitely information that's needed, especially if you're presenting topics that need things to be defined or that are just not ordinary. That's a very lame word, but that's all that came there at the moment. So in when providing background, be sure that you relate it to where you're going and you're not just spinning your wheels to be like, three pages, check, and then you finally start writing. Since the dawn of time, or according to Miriam Lipster's dictionary, I say, and we're not X happy, it just happens. Um, here's kind of your map data, knowledge, action. If we kind of include all of these, you'll be outlining, you'll be researching, you will really have to develop a plan to get you from your introduction to your conclusion. And these are different areas that you can include in that at one. There may not be a solution to the problem that you're addressing, but it is okay to evaluate the solutions that are out there. That's part of you trying to determine what is good, what is bad, what's in motion, where this issue is going. So you can and advocate for the best solution, global, national, state, Whatever is out there, you can incorporate and, I guess, address. Again, trying to be non-biased, trying not to say, this is the one true answer. This is an answer, an option, a direction. And you can say good or bad because you are synthesizing and evaluating. But you want to try hard to stay away from having that very clear, concise answer because then you haven't asked a synthesis question. And that is the end of our research component. I feel like we should start. Thank you. All right, we're going to hit just a couple other quick things here. And community service is usually well, right? That's me. All right. Do a couple of examples. Yes. Do you, yeah, any ones you want to hit on? Okay, Mr. Carraway is going to pull up some community service examples, and I'll try to be a little bit quicker here. I tend to get all excited about research. Community service is sometimes daunting for students because they're like, what do I do? The purpose of community service is to make an impact. Sometimes it's a check. My very, very first year I had a student say, I'm going to buy equipment for the science classroom. I'm like, with your, your own money? She's like, yes, that counts, right? I'm just going to buy these things, and I'm going to give them to the science teacher. And I'm like, that is benefiting you because you can say, yes, I have done community service and provided a need. That's not what we're looking for. Our needs don't have to be huge as far as, like, starting the school in an orphanage in Romania. They're needs that you see that are kind of integrated and related to your internship. Do they have to be married like this? No. Sometimes having that loose connection or pulling in a different facet of what you've been learning makes it more meaningful for you. 
it is okay that this part is personal. That this part is something that you see or someone you know feels is a need that needs to be addressed. Repetitive there. Here, this is um, Devin Berger. She worked with wildlife. She did fundraising and brought the wildlife people into the local elementary school so that they could see the animals, meet the animals, touch the animals. And then she did some like a run for a fundraiser because she's a runner in the community to kind of make the community aware of what was going on. Her passion and interest were animals. I don't think that's where her future took her, but she spent this time pulling in the Wildlife Career Center to the elementary school students, and that was where she focused her efforts for the year. Right here? Okay. Francis and Libby did theirs on sex education. I had two students last year. One was working in the neonatal intensive care, and the other was working with CHIP, an organization in Charlottesville that helps underfunded families. And in talking together here in this room last year, they, were, they realized that one of the common denominators was um, young pregnancies and early deliveries, where if there were the knowledge of how not to get pregnant, then potentially there wouldn't be the need for CHIP and it could de decrease the number of babies in the neonatal intensive care unit. So as far as success, would I say that their, their community service was incredibly successful and changed the world? No, but they were able to have the words sex education, comprehensive sex education, mentioned in our public school building. They talked to all the, the different principals. They had to jump through the hoops. To bring forward an education, they had to bring in an outside educator. They trained themselves just to simply have the words and the ideas mentioned somewhere where they hadn't been mentioned before because it was important to them that we start the dialogue that maybe if we want to present these problems in the future, we might need to change what we're doing with our students in the high school setting. Is that it or is it? You had to find the links. Oh. Right. And some were from other schools. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I pulled up a couple here. Actually. So Becca, I don't know if you remember, she was one chance because she did a reading. I'm trying to film it. This is a student from another school, and sometimes we do utilize our resources and we work with the different schools in our county. It was a high school student who worked with an elementary school to kind of coordinate breakfast buddies to bring older children, older children, your older kids to the younger kids. Those little people sometimes are very desperate for attention and motivation and direction. And our older students who are getting ready to go into the world sometimes are just as desperate for that attention and direction. So by combining or coordinating where the high school students would start their days with the elementary school students, it provided stability. They were reading buddies, so there's someone else there to help them do their homework when they may not have that at home. It just formed a connection that benefited both the older students and the younger students. There's a community service action plan that you may have seen or you may have heard mentioned that will all help you with as you start to weigh out what is your best option for community service. What is the impact? How does this help? How will I know it has helped? So I guess we get back to your common theme. What need do you see and how do you think you can fill it? And that gets us through community service. I'm just mentioning a couple of things about this and, uh, from the examples that Ms. Esch was, was talking about. One of which, uh, so Lindsay and Francis uh, had two different topics and they were able to kind of meet, find a, find a way to bring both of their topics. We had a number of students that have done multiple, where multiple students have been able to get together and find the topics. Uh, Dr. Kai, who wants to do uh, marketing, we've had students who've done marketing who've helped with fundraising efforts for, say, somebody who's got to be doing their medicine and uh, wants to do a fundraising their medical fund. So, That is allowed and it's encouraged. So I want to make sure for that. The other piece about the community service is that it often dovetails closely with the legacy piece. And that's what Ms. Knight is going to talk with me about is the legacy thing. Legacy is uh, it can be part of community service or it can be a little bit of a standalone piece. But uh, one of the examples I was going to show you there real quick, and I, I wanted to just mention, and uh, pardon me for kind of uh, uh, taking this over for a second. But one, there's another one, all the stuff is legacy. There's a slideshow. But one of the deals with this, uh, so uh, last year when this nice student, Samil, um, he did his on 
uh, physical therapy. And so one of the things we get a lot of, and this is where I want to put this in your head, we get a lot of, I'm going to put my legacy, I'm going to create a, a pamphlet and leave it in the such and such office. Where it sort of just sits until it becomes a fire or gets started away. So Samino last year, he's doing physical therapy, which is a tough one sometimes to get a really significant uh, piece. We've seen a lot of really terrible It's a really good one. But he did one. He went and did a, he prepared a truly good, uh, really good manual for use of uh, exercise equipment for, uh, for the, what was the, uh, so it was a rehabilitation. So it was a rehabilitation, it was a Nelson Physical Therapy, but then he took it and applied it to the community and made it available through the local library. Yeah, and this was something they wanted, they needed. Yeah, so they we, said we need this for, like yeah. That. So we wouldn't say that like a pamphlet or, a, or an informational piece is off limits, but what I would say is make sure it's going to be used and have some kind of significance. So that was yeah. a really it strong It was requested, for, yeah. For last year. So, it uh, is a really good manual. Going to just talk about legacy for a second, then we're going to uh, uh, do a little processing again. Yay. Okay. We'll be coming. Yeah. So, for the purpose of this project, a legacy is the lasting effect of your actions. And I mean, just take a second and think about this. The lasting effect, not the right now, not the what you've done, but how what you've done continues to work, continues to affect people after you're gone. So your legacy is how this project will affect people after you've graduated and moved on in your life and you're doing other things. What you do is your history, what you set in motion is your legacy. So this is the most challenging part of your project, but it's my favorite part because this is what makes it real. This isn't just some paper that you're turning into a teacher where they're gonna give you a grade. This isn't just going someplace and meeting some new people and, and pushing yourself to talk to people when you don't really like to talk to people. It's not going out and, and, and picking stuff up. And, and it's nice, but, but it's, the, it's the after it's all done. What are you doing that's going to change the world? It doesn't have to be a huge change, but it's going to make a change beyond the moment. It's not your history, it's your legacy. It's the change that you set in motion through this project. And you can do some amazing things. And they may seem small to you, but they aren't small to the people that they affect. So we have a video, and you may have seen this video before. It's just a great one, so it's worth watching again. Okay, here are a few questions that can change your career, your business, maybe even your life. First comes from Claire Booth Woos, one of the first women to serve in the U.S. Congress. One day in the early 1960s, she went to visit President Kennedy. She told him this, a great man is a sentence. Well, Abraham Lincoln's sentence was, he preserved the Union and freed the slaves. Franklin Roosevelt's sentence was, he lifted us out of a great depression and helped us win a world war. Most worried that Kennedy was trying to do too many things, that his sentence risked becoming a model paradigm. If you really want to find your true motivation, ask yourself that question. What's my sentence? You don't have to be proud of anything this to help. Maybe your sentence is, she invented a device that made people's lives easier. Maybe it's, she taught two generations of kids how to read. Think about your sentence. And use it to navigate your life. But to make your sentence really come alive and to create motivation that lasts, you need a second question. So each night, before you go to sleep, ask yourself, was I better today than yesterday? Keep asking that question, because that's how we really prove day by day, step by step, over and over for a very long time. It's tough. But it's the only way. Combine these two questions and motivation at work, in business, and the rest of your life will take care of itself. Try the surprising truth about what motivates us. <laughs> So the question you're going to ask yourself is, what can you do to leave a lasting impact? What is your legacy going to be? 
And here's the thing, you know, they talk about, uh, you know, taught two generations of students how to read. We have had students who did projects that are still in motion today. Setting up programs, we had somebody who started a school, right? You can be the catalyst that changes future generations. We had a student last year, I think it was, from I don't remember which school it is, who started a program where they collected clothing for interviews for people who didn't have money. They would pick up a basket and they would have shoes and belts and shirts, pants, whatever, interview clothing. And I mean, what a great idea. Uh, we have had students who helped uh, teachers develop technology-based lesson plans who were uncomfortable with using technology with students to help them with science or to help them with reading. Um, we had one student a couple of years ago who she didn't know what she wanted to do. She had no idea about a legacy, no idea about a community service, but she knew she liked the law. So she went and she interned at the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. Well, actually, it was at a lawyer's office who then went on to become the Commonwealth Attorney. And she sat in on court cases. And she asked him, what are the problems that you see that need to be addressed? And he said, it's a revolving door. We see the same people again and again and again. And she said, why do you think that is? He said, I'm not sure, but I think it might be access to resources. He said, you know, she said, well, you know what? That's a question I want to answer. Why do people keep ending up in prison, in jail? Why do they go back and back? It's called recidivism. Her whole research project was on this. And she found out there were a lot of things. They didn't know where the resources were. It wasn't that the resources didn't exist. It's that they didn't have any idea how to find them. A lot of these people didn't have cars. They didn't have access to um, transportation. So she made her whole community service about finding a way to let them know. Is there transportation if you don't have a car? Are there food banks? Where are the food banks? Where's the job training? Where are the resources that somebody who's been struggling can use to get back on their feet, to get out of that system? And she created a pamphlet and I would say, oh, a pamphlet. It was color coded by region with phone numbers and addresses. It gave information on how to get there. And she put it at the actual courthouse so that when people are coming out of the system, they are actually shown, this is what you can do. Here are resources you can use. There's a lot of research involved. She went around and she put them at libraries, in the community, in the region. And then she handed over her work to the courthouse when she was done and said, so that you can update it. And they said, yes, thank you so much. This is a great resource. And that's still in place. So it doesn't have to be groundbreaking, earth shattering. You know, people are writing about it in other countries. You can make changes here in your local communities that will affect people in amazing ways. What's the answer to your legacy? Take something you care about and then work with people who care about it too and ask them questions because they've been doing it. They see the problems. And then work with them and do your research to find answers to those problems and then make your legacy whatever you can do to help solve that problem in the future. Okay? And you guys are amazing, and I know that you're going to do a fantastic job. Thank you, Ms. Dyke. bingo sheets on the back you have a number your number will determine your group so we're gonna do a little bit of moving around and then eventually and then the second thing we're gonna do will determine uh, the order of uh, well <laughs> so here's what we want to do I'm gonna kind of give you a geographic area you're gonna to need to circle up as a group because you're gonna to need to be talking about this so I'll give you the geographic area you'll need to take stuff you with you or you can tuck stuff off the side of the room whatever you want to do um, but if you are in group one, you're going to be over here, kind of the, and I would say take like uh, three chairs. Groups should be about five or six people. So take like three chairs up front, three chairs in the second row. Group one is there. Group two is here. Group 
three is going to be over here. Group four is going to be over here. Group five over there and group six. Group seven is going to be in this area. Group eight, group nine, ten, eleven. You may need to drive some more chairs in the back and twelve. So find your find your groups and get with them, and then we'll get rolling on this.
Do you guys have that? Yeah, with your, uh, you know, with your advisors. But I will tell you, one of the things that part of the reason for having these conversations about significance and legacy, something that happens every single year. We get the expo together. We get everybody in there. You know, and I will say most people do a tremendous and outstanding job. There is always somebody there who is just like the, oh, I didn't read that kind of person. I mean, who either doesn't get the dress code, doesn't get the, what are the expectations for the display, doesn't get the, what's going to happen here. And they are so obviously like such a, just an outlier that they are, I mean, honestly, I had a conversation with one person uh, from a school who's not represented here uh, today, but I had a conversation last year. Just the conversation was, I mean, all I can say was, really? And they were like, yeah, I know, I just didn't read any of this stuff. You know? Come on. I mean, you guys are going to be heading into an environment, honestly, a year from now, uh, you're going to be heading into an environment, whether it's a work environment or a college environment, which is where most of you guys will be. Where people are going to put the guidelines out there and just expect you to read them and understand them and ask questions and interpret them and follow them. And that's kind of what this is about. So when it comes to the grade, you really want to make sure that you are looking at those four grades. If you're sure about what have I got, have I, have I hit this at the level it should be, uh, and basically do, doing a, a, you know, an evaluation of, of your own work. Which leads me to this part. Quality points. I'm a guitar now, so I uh, you know, found this is a good place to... Uh, Bringing a picture of a, uh, a Martinell Low 42 guitar, which is uh, that particular guitar is probably about $150,000 guitar. Uh, they're only 19. Martin's been around since 1833. Nobody in the company survives that long without doing something really, 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 really well. So here's the thing about quality and quality points. And you guys have seen quality points in some of our other projects. This is one where it really comes into play. I mean, if you're just checking the boxes, believe me. Your advisors know, and I know. You're just checking the boxes, and you check all the boxes. Okay. An hour to another. You guys stay in the roof, hopefully. Max, you can get Get into that quality points area. You've got to get into some other stuff to show. Dedication, significance, learning stretch, all of those pieces of the job. And most students do very well. It's not a scary, it's to, but you need to be conscious of it. This is not, again, this is not a check the box kind of experience. This is something that most students in K through 12 do not have the opportunity to do, which is drive their own personal learning. So with that, if you're doing it well, you will see the outcome in quality points. Get your work in in a timely fashion. You're using the class time that you have, you're using it really well and effectively. Not just kind of goofing off the list. You are, um, you know, your your community service shows real uh, a real commitment to finding, you know, what the designer was talking about. Community service and legacy like shows a real commitment to finding a real problem that's in and something you're going to do is really going to help. All of those things figure that's all the grades. So you need to be conscious of it because it's a part of the overall uh, grading picture. So enough on the commercial there. Uh, I want to talk just for a second about. Sweet. That was appropriate. <laughs> so here's the deal with the proposal. You guys are should be in this process right now. Basically, three steps. And the first step is you are creating a document that has that you're basically rough drafting everything in. Right, you're just kind of putting this in there and going, "What am I do for that internship?" You know, many of you right now are in the process of securing these internships. Uh, hopefully, you're kind of keeping that up to date. Uh, what am I gonna? What am I thinking about doing for community service? And so you're completing that document and sharing it with your advisors, and then your advisor has a lot of input on what's going on with that uh, with that document and your and your process. When you and your advisor feel like it's a point where it's ready to submit, then there is a link on the proposal page uh, of the website. You go to that so Google form to submit that, and that comes to us, and we will send back feedback. We very rarely ever just go, no, no way, no how, you're not going to do this. That's very, I mean, that's happened maybe twice in the last five years. Very rarely does that happen. But usually we'll provide some feedback. A lot of it has to do sometimes with the significance portions or whether or not uh, the research question really looks analytical. You know, this is from Marie. You will have been working on that with your 
advisor. Your advisor is really the main person. By the way, just to let you know, this is really important for everybody to know, don't ever come to me with a question that you're hoping that I will override your advisor. We don't do the mom and dad. I didn't like the question. From, I didn't like the answer I got from mom, so now I'm going to go to Mr. Perry and dad and see if I can get that. It doesn't work that way. First thing I'm going to do is look right back to your advisor and say, where are things with it? What kind of, what kind of conversations have you had? And then I'll work with the advisor. And, and sometimes there's some legitimate points to iron out. I'm healthy, happy to facilitate that. But what I'm not going to do is say, you know, notice Wilson, sorry, your opinion was wrong on this. I'm going to give you a different opinion. It's not going to work. So just letting you know. But one of the things also about the proposal, and I said this earlier, but I really need to make sure that everybody's clear on this. If you did a summer internship, you still have to do the proposal process. You can take the information, and if you need it, you can email me because I've got it all from your uh, internship, you know, what you sent for your internship. If you don't have that anywhere in or that language, I'm happy to just copy and paste it and send it to you, and you can just pop it your, uh, your online proposal. Uh, so just let me know if you need it. But you still need to do the proposal because it also carries so that's how so you'll get you'll submit those that stuff comes back with some feedback uh everybody usually it goes straight through to the advisor they'll share that with you then you craft your letter of intent which is essentially your contract this is what i plan to do now i will tell you that a large portion of you will probably change plans over the time that you're in this something will happen differently you will come up with a research question but then you go out to your internship and you realize holy cow there's a whole Way better research question out there that I could that I could do. That's fine. Just keep your advisor posted. Keep me posted. We you know we see changes all the time. We just don't make changes without letting us know and getting our our, our approval. So Miss Alton's going to talk with you in just a minute about the website. Now, as she's coming up, here's the deal with the website. The website is not a final product. And a lot of the projects you've done for us, you know, going all the way back that ninth grade website virtual museum kind of thing that you did. That was a final product. This is a portfolio of what you were doing in an ongoing fashion. At the end of it, it is a final product, but in process, you should be able to go in, say, mid-October, and I will do this. I'll go around and start taking tours of your websites just seeing what's going on. And if I go in there and see stick figures still sitting in there from the template, or if I, do we still have stick it's figures? It's Barack Obama. Barack Obama. If I go and see that you put you saw a picture of Barack Obama as you, uh, I'm going to know that you so that's something where um, you know for your advisors they're going to be looking at this as part of their process of grading you in an ongoing fashion. I'm going to be looking at progress. You know that's something you don't just kind of wait until everything else is done and then build a website. That website is something that you are. It's essentially you just ongoing. Like so, Ms. Alton's going to talk to you a little bit about how to do a good one. So I've come in and talked to Green a little bit about this, but I'll probably be coming into everybody else's classroom and talking kind of the nitty gritty stuff. Um, but I wanted to show you some examples today that I thought they did at least some part of their site really well. And for you to be thinking about this going forward. The one nice thing for you guys is that you will be the first group to use new Google Sites, the old one. So the examples are going to old Google Sites, which you know look a little more rickety than kind of how new Google Sites organizes everything for you. They do really good jobs displaying their content as best they could on an old Google Site to make it engaging and interesting. Um, the first thing I want to tell you, and every year people will do this, do not use a senior portrait, like professional headshot of yourself for the front page picture of you. Okay. Certainly don't use a selfie, even if your project is about selfies. Please don't use that. Find a picture that just by looking at it, I can get an idea of what your project is about. Um, so I'm going to show you, I've got a whole bunch of examples, and I'm going to bring a whole bunch of these up and just quickly kind of take you through what I thought they did really well to make their site engaging and interesting. Um, <laughs> so this first one, Amelia's, I love it because her picture is her doing part of her project, part of her internship. All right. And as you look down, she's got like the logos and everything. Just it really, you know, immediately, you don't even have to read a single word on her site. What is her topic? Right. Some type of history, archaeology, easy. You know, she has a little video 
pitch of her internship. And this is awesome because it prepares you for the expo where you have to kind of have an elevator pitch of your project. This is one that I love, that her picture is of her ID. What do we think her project had something to do with? Right, something to do probably with medicine. And that is a great way to kind of catch and hook the readers of your website. Here again, here's another one. Um, and we talked, I talked to a couple people about this. You know, you can't, if you're doing something medical or with a lawyer or something, a lot of times you can't take pictures inside of your internship, which is totally fine. And she just put a picture of the building. And you might be like, well, that's kind of sad. No, it, it's awesome because it's showing this is where she went. And she realizes that it's important to show this was part of her project. If you need to, you, a lot of times the websites will have stock images of the insides of a lab or an office or an exam room. You can use those on your website. You know, find ways to really bring in what you did, even if you weren't allowed to take pictures in it. Um, this is another one. I love it. She put up videos. Part of the project was actually creating these videos for teachers. And then she did a video portfolio of her artwork. Great things to put on your site. You're, the ones I'm showing you are like, oh, all these people put video on their website. These are the really the only ones I could find that put video on their website. And I don't know why people don't put more video on their website. It's so powerful and it's a great way to let people really get into your topic. Um, I loved this one. And it's, I don't even really like yellow text on a black background, but he's doing theater. And so it really shows kind of what his topic was. And it's fantastic images of him doing things that relate to his project on the front page. Not just, you know, like headshots of him next to a tree doing this. You know, here's another really good one, totally different architecture, kind of a dry topic, but she found a really good picture for working with her uh, mentor. You know, so when you're going out to your internship, your community service, take a lot of pictures, ask people to take pictures of you, even if they're, if you, if you need to stage a picture after the fact, do it. It's okay that you had to stage it after the fact. It'll make your website and everything more engaging. Um, this one I just love because they did um, like water skiing for handicapped children. And it was awesome. This it was actually two students worked together on this project. Um, and they had just had great images from it. You know, and you can see they put a lot of images in with their journal entries. I just love it. This is another one. Think about... How are you going to explain what you did? Explain it. So find good pictures and videos. Have people take them. Don't be scared to ask people to take your picture. And so you notice, I tried to really show you sites that have engaging pictures on the front. People are doing project really think about that make sure you know when you're going to your internship or you're going to your community service you know wear something that you're okay having your picture that's going to go on the front page of your website or in your journal entries um, you know you really do want to document this this is such a great thing to use when you're applying for scholarships or to colleges or to programs you know showing them that as a high school senior that you're doing this year long project that you came up with and it has a community service and a legacy aspect and a research aspect it impresses people. So you, know, you have to do this for us, use it to your advantage um, to help you get ahead. We've had tons of kids that just based on their website, people from that have nothing to do even with Virginia have found it just doing a Google search and have contacted them. We had one student who did um, a research paper I don't know what our topic was on. It was something with horses. And a professor at the University of Kentucky contacted her and asked her if he could use her paper in one of his classes. 
I don't think he realized she was a high school student. But I mean, and she, cause she forwarded it to me and she goes, um, is this legit or is someone trying to spam me? I'm like, nope, that's super legit. And I said, you need to make sure you get credit for it because then you, that's another awesome thing to put on your resume that you had a research paper that a professor is actually using in one of his classes. Um, so really think about that. People are going to be looking at this and, you know, we kind of laugh like, no one looks at your site except for Mr. Caraway and I and your advisors and the evaluators, but it's on the internet. Technically, anyone can find it. So you want to make sure that you're always putting your best foot forward with this. You know, make sure you're branding yourself. When you come up with a color scheme for your website, carry that through into your presentation and your expo board. So come up with a title and kind of a brand for this because this is really your way of showcasing what you spent an entire year working on. Um, so like I said, I will be coming into your classroom and kind of helping you with some of the nuts and bolts and how to kind of spruce up your website. Um, but be thinking about this as you go into this project, what you can save as kind of virtual artifacts for your website and put on there. Any questions? So what Ms. Alton said about the fact that there are um, you know, these, these will be seen. I mean, we share these out. Um, and then when you're evaluated, like uh, the expo um, and the uh, and your uh, presentations at the end of this process, that people are going to be looking at these. I mean, your evaluators and judges are going to be looking at these. Part of the grade and part of what they'll be giving you feedback on and giving your advisors uh, uh, information on will be what they saw here. And then part of what they'll ask questions about will be what they saw on your websites as well. So they're really, they are a critical piece of what you do in, uh, in this. So moving right along, let's see, here we go. Mr. Reynolds is going to take you, Mr. Reynolds, there he goes, Mr. Reynolds is here. He's gonna take you into a little bit of a problem solving. Uh, oh, I wanna go just before I do that, just the rules before we go into the problem solving thing, just the rules you need to keep in mind. And the first one is to keep your advisor happy. Because your advisors, this is really important. Keep your advisor happy because, again, you can have, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm happy to help you think through stuff. I'm happy, happy to work with you and your advisor to kind of refine things. I'm happy to maybe try and um, provide contact information, whatever it happens to be. But ultimately, your advisor is the person who really helps you make this thing work. So keep them happy. Um, you want to do that proposal process properly. We talked about that. Make sure you got all the elements in place. The better it is, the uh, less you're going to have to fix when, it, when your feedback comes back. Use your networks. Talk to people. Find out if you got you know just ask people if you've got uh, an interest area. You know, start contacting people. Sometimes even places that won't. A lot of times, actually, places that won't be able to give you an interest area to give you uh, contacts. Um, you also want to keep your advisor happy. That's very important. So, in mind. Um, you want to use that class time production. This is open time. Yeah, this is going to be a lot like your college experience. For college, you actually go to class hours, but for every class that you take, you somewhere in the ballpark of about uh, 15 hours or 10 to 15 hours of work during that week. So you got to think about that and go, okay, how is you know how am I going to structure that? You guys have been to UVA library and see doing that. How am I going to structure that? If you've got a specific set of time here. I see it happen where I walk in, I don't waste some time, and it, first of all, it's going to impact your quality points, and secondly, it's, uh, you know, that's the time that you can do this class without, without having to have any work or academic work outside of that class period if you do it right. Uh, so this outside, make sure you've got the artifacts for your website, for your uh, displays and things like that, so make sure you're taking pics. I know some of your interests are not always possible, but be creative about that, even if you're, you know, if you can't take a picture of that. Take a picture of the outside of the building. Take a picture of the uh, black and those things that are going on. You can be creative about that. You also want to keep your advisor happy. That's a very important rule to keep in mind as well. Don't procrastinate. We're not going to really go into this, but you know, here's the deal with procrastination. Procrastination is a bad bargain with your brain. That's a time management problem. It's a problem of saying, well, if I don't do this now, I'll feel better about it because I won't be doing it. I'll just put it off until later. And the research has shown you feel worse about having to later, particularly when it's approaching. Just whatever you can do. I mean, if we all procrastinate. It's an art form for some of you. I've seen it. But be thinking about how you are 
we're going to make so that you don't get home. like every video that you've done with this program if you get behind on it it's a lot harder to dig out and rule number nine Bias are this is serious I mean, really they're going to be the ones that are going to shepherd you through this process they're going to be the ones that evaluate you and grade you at the end of the, end of the day you want to make sure that they're happy and the last thing is know thyself we'll kind of get into that a little bit later but uh before it, when i say that is you need to know who you are how and you're thinking about this and going what am I willing to commit to? What am I interested in? How am I going to How am I going to extend myself maybe beyond my comfort zone? And we can help you with that. But uh, part of this also is a problem solving process. So that's where Mr. Reynolds comes in. <clears throat> Are you ready, kids? <laughs> you get, you get it? Yeah. Uh, Sponge. You guys have been listening for a while, so now you get to do some things. So let's do here. Lost at sea. <clears throat> Look at this, baby. It was set up to be at the beginning. Don't read all of that. Have a yeah, all right, we're good. You didn't see any of that, did you? <clears throat> hey, I'm presenting here, all right? Yes. So, lost to sea, will your lifeboat survive? So, here's your scenario. Group's been shipwrecked, draining a lifeboat, you have a box of matches, and then you have a bunch of other items you've salvaged from the ship, and you're going to First, you're going to figure out the most important items for your survival. We've actually had the Coast Guard do what they talk about. So we're going to see how, how well you do a problem solving this. So you got to get a worksheet and a pen or a pencil. So here they come. Number groups. So that massive group that was over there, you guys maybe split up into two if you would. Um. First of all, you're going to do this by yourself. That's what step one is. So by yourself, give you about five minutes or so. You're going to rank the salvaged items. What's that? Count them up. See how many there are. One being the most important, etc. So that's step one, your individual ranking. Go down through those. You already have a box of matches, so that's not on the list. Figuring out the rest just by yourself. Yeah. Ooh, navigation tool. I guess you won't pick that one then. But it is a navigation tool. Star, she says. Do you have anything to write with? Maybe you'll come to an island. Who knows? Box of matches. Oh, man. Here you have a box of matches. 
skills, you have the chops. Uh, the, the biggest uh, challenge for you is the time. But uh, again, spending some time thinking about this. One group uh, on the advice side just wrote, don't procrastinate. Of course, at the end of this year, you know what's going to happen is about 60% uh, of you guys are going to stand up and do your senior presentations. And you're going to say, my advice to the rich people. So, uh, but the question is how to protect, procrastinate productively. You know, how to do, how to minimize it, how to do it in such a way that doesn't hurt you, doesn't have you trying to write your paper in the last night and the last 15 minutes with a deadline, stuff like that. So, you know, think about this, but also know, and this is kind of the final message. You know, keep your advisor happy it was like rule number one, three, seven, and nine or something. Keep, but your advisor's also there, and we are also here to support you, and we will. So, if you ask questions. Run into the speed bumps, send up the flare, communicate early and often, as we often say in, in Blue Ridge. We will be there for you to do whatever we can. We're not going to serve your internship for you. We're not going to write your paper for you. You guys know that. But we will try to help provide whatever guidance we can, and advice, and uh, resources we can to, to help the success, do this successfully. We want to see everybody get an A and everybody get all 10 following points and everybody do as well as possible. Actually, really pleased with that happened. So you guys will do great. Right. Know it, and uh, I'll be coming out. Uh, hopefully, as uh, things start settling in with the uh, school year, I'll be coming out and just dropping by. Uh, I'll work with your advisors. Uh, I do want to send out, I'm, I'm going to be sending out both a link to this uh, presentation, also a couple of different possibilities for internship opportunities that we're sort of creating for Blue Ridge one uh, sort of student mentorship or tutoring programs at each local school. So, if anybody's doing anything from uh, science education to, uh, to regular K 12 education or anything like that. Might want to be involved. This might be an opportunity for community service. Also, I just got a thing uh, from some people that I talked to in England the other day. who were doing a video uh, series for um, for a podcast called Nevertheless, uh, which is about primarily about women in STEM education. But they're looking for students to be participants in a video podcast that they're putting together. Of course, this month, and that would be a, uh, a killer uh, both internship and community service opportunity. So. I'll be sending this information out. Anything else that comes up like that, we'll send out as well. And, and in the meantime, keep plugging away at the uh, topics. I'm going to take a look at these. I'll be interested to see what's going on. And again, I'll be out and uh, talking to your classes over these uh, the next couple of weeks. So thank you guys for a good day. Advisors, y'all ready to uh, hit the road? <laughs>